In this problem, we have a 200 pound uniform crate. When you see uniform, it says it means that the center of gravity is also the geometric center right here, point G. And it is subjected to a 80 pound force. The location is given and we need to determine the state of motion of this crate. The coefficient of static friction between the crate and the surface is 0 0.3. So there are actually three situations. The first situation is that this box is not going to move at all. The second situation is when the box is going to slide on the surface. And the third situation is when this box is going to tip over. So how do we approach this problem? If this applied force is considered P, I would calculate the force necessary for the box to uh, slide, the force necessary for the box to tip over, and then compare this 80 pounds to those two results. So first, calculate minimum force minimum P for sliding to occur. So in that case, this is the free body diagram. The weight force is right here in the center. That's your 200 pound weight force. This is my P1. Right now I'm treating it as if it's an unknown. My normal force doesn't have a specified location, and this is the frictional force. So static equilibrium equations still uh, apply at this critical instant when sliding is about to occur. So along the x direction, we have P1 minus FF equals to 0. Resultant force, force along the y direction equals to n minus 200 equals to 0. And because we are solving for the situation when sliding is about to occur, therefore the frictional force does equal to the maximum static friction, which can be evaluated by mu s n, which equals to 0 0.3 n, n being the normal force. So as you can see, we have three equations and three unknowns, P1, FF, and normal force M. So from here, we can solve for P1 to be 60 pounds. And then I'm going to calculate the minimum P for tipping over to occur. So we have to draw this free body diagram a little differently because even though we have the same weight force, same well, location for the force P2, that's the applied force, the normal force now is placed at the corner. So we know the location of the normal force now. It is at the corner, let's call it point A because we are solving for the situation when tipping is about to happen. Frictional force, we draw it uh, for the sake of completing the free body diagram, but uh, in the situation when tipping over is about to occur, frictional force does not matter. And we do not need to do force equilibrium equations, but we can write one moment equilibrium equations about point A. Normal force and frictional force both have lines of action passing through this point, therefore they do not have moment about point A. So about point A we have 200 multiplied by this distance, this distance, because um, we have a uniform crate, so this distance right here is simply half of the width, therefore that's 1.5 feet. minus P2 times the height is at three feet. So three equals to zero. So from there, P2 equals to a hundred pound. So what does that mean? It means that it takes 
60 pounds of this applied force at this location to cause sliding. And it takes 100 pounds applied force to cause tipping over. Therefore, because P1 is smaller than P2, 60 pounds is smaller than 100 pounds, it means that it takes less force to cause a sliding. Therefore, sliding is more likely to occur. So sliding will occur before tipping over occurs. And how do they compare to our 80 pound force? So if this force is actually smaller than P1, then the object will be stationary, will not be move, moving at all. However, this 80 pound force is bigger than the 60 pound force. Therefore, because of this, we can draw the conclusion that this box will be sliding. When you are solving for problems involving friction, um, it takes making some kind of logical judgment, logical decision, and you can do it however you want. This is my method. I like to do it this way. Um, it's your personal preference. If you understand this logical reasoning well, um, you sure can develop your own method and come to the same conclusion.